Hello, I'm Daniel O'Brien, and whomever is watching this has probably at one time or another broken the law. Jay walked, forgot to use your blinker, played music too loud, carried some marijuana at some point in your life before it was legal. Which means you could, and according to the law, should get arrested. But does that make it right or even legal? In the eyes of our own constitution, no. In the eyes of the law, yes. Which means our laws are breaking our own laws and should be arrested. Should be arrested? Is that how it works? Laws arresting laws? Now, unless you have been avoiding any type of news for the last seven years, you probably know that our country is currently dealing with a mass incarceration problem. Mass incarceration actually got kicked into gear during the introduction of the war on drugs by, ugh, Nixon in 1971, and which a Nixon advisor openly admitted was a tactic that the Nixon administration used to harm communities that would oppose him. He said, quote, the Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. I guess people decided to ignore that because the war on drugs, which was said to focus on drug kingpins and masterminds, led to 25% of the world's prison population currently residing in US prisons. We have the highest prison population in the world. One in five of incarcerated folks are imprisoned for a drug offense, and 88% of the eight million marijuana arrests made between 2001 and 2010 were for simple possession. These are not kingpins or masterminds. These are citizens who had a substance on them that is less harmful than alcohol, and a consistent plot point in that 70s show. Those lovable goofballs, look at them acting silly in a circle like you do when you're high, I guess. Anyway, roughly 65 million people had criminal records as of 2010, and tens of millions of Americans have been arrested but never convicted of an offense. So, do that many people really deserve to be arrested? If you said yes to that question, then you are saying, I'm all for a police state, and I disagree with the Constitution of the United States. And you're being dumb with your hands like that when you say it, because the fourth 5th and 6th, 8th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. They're all broken by this. That's so much amendment to break. So, how are these important laws that make our country what it is getting broken? In several terrible ways. The war on drugs has allowed police to use minor infractions to be able to harass and arrest people without a probable cause. This is protected by the courts creating laws like stop and frisk, which allow the police to stop and then frisk people at their discretion. Based on the numbers, those people stopped and frisked tend to be African-Americans or Latino. In addition, police can pull people over in their cars based on minor driving violations or suspicions. Maybe you've heard the term driving while black. Well, that's because the majority of people pulled over are black or Latino. Then, a lot of times when folks are pulled over, the police will search people's cars even if they have a minor suspicion there could be drugs. Although legally, the police aren't allowed to search a person's car without permission, on many occasions, if people refuse permission, they have been arrested anyways. You know, for driving or parking violations, which can be very hard to disprove in court. In addition to the law allowing for mass raids and huge task forces that can break into people's houses or schools if there is a suspicion of drugs. State and local law enforcement agencies were granted the authority to keep for their own use the vast majority of cash and assets seized while waging the drug war. Even when people are found innocent, their property can still be subject to forfeiture because their property might have been involved in a crime. And when that innocent person goes back and says, that's not fair, and challenge government's actions, the government can legally retaliate by filing criminal charges. Baseless or not, the person now charged still has to deal with that in court and then try and clear their record. So a lot of people just don't bother. Imagine your middle school hall monitor stealing your lunch money. And when you go to the principal about it, the hall monitor tells the principal, you've been skipping fourth period every day. Even though it's not true, the principal is gonna look into this and you have to somehow prove you weren't skipping class. It's like that, but bigger and more terrible because prisons and racism. And now Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third has issued a directive increasing police seizures of cash and property purely based on suspicion, which means it's even easier now than ever for the government to take your money, home, car, or general things you own if they think you might be involved with anything drug related. This has been happening for 40 years and it's only happening more now. But why would police do that? Aren't they supposed to serve and protect, not take and collect? You're welcome for that off the cuff wordplay. Well, here's the thing. 
The police are not only incentivized with all the things they can legally take, but they are pressured to get a specific number of arrests or the government won't properly fund their unit. Even though in several states, quota arrests are illegal, on numerous occasions, police have come forward saying that there was pressure from higher ups to get more arrests for their department. In 2016, Edwin Raymond recorded NYPD officers pushing to get their quota arrests targeting poor young people of color and filed the class action lawsuit along with 11 other officers. And he's not the first or the last cop to come forward about this. Bigger cash grants have been given to law enforcement agencies that are willing to make drug law enforcement a top priority, even though participation in the drug war takes away resources from more serious crimes like murder, rape, grand theft, and violent assault. Yeah, I'm far more afraid of a kid carrying some weed than a person who wants to kill me. Definitely use the SWAT team in high schools because the principal thought he smelled a joint. Anyway, all that breaks the 14th Amendment. So why do the courts and government keep letting this slide? Because the prison industry wants bodies. No. Not bodies for a Matrix style sex rave. I don't know why I clarified. No one thought that's what I meant. The more people in prison, the more money the taxpayers have to pay to the government to keep those prisons running, especially private prisons. But it's hard to put people in jail who have money and can hire attorneys and maybe fight a wrongful arrest and get out on bail. So again, police arrest people in low income neighborhoods. Then when that person is taken into jail, the prosecutor knowingly throws the book at them, which means they charge them with any and every crime you can think of and offer a plea deal of only a few years in prison versus decades in prison because all those different random charges, which means a lot of times people don't even get that speedy fair trial. A lot of times they don't even see a defense attorney because it'll take longer to see the attorney and schedule a court date than just be in prison for years. Now that people have noticed that so much of the population is in jail, hard not to, sometimes prosecutors offer diversion, which means if you have the money, you could pay to have your record cleaned, but not have to go to jail. But it doesn't guarantee that you get your record expunged. You still have to pay fees and take classes, and if you don't have enough money to pay every fee, even if over time you paid most of it, you go to jail. So it's pretty much debtor's prison, which breaks the 14th Amendment again. In addition to this, the three strikes law, which means you break the law three times, and mandatory minimums, which means you have to serve a mandatory amount of jail time, only adds to the arrest being made. Now, you might be saying, but if someone is a repeat offender, they should go to jail. Well, let's give you an example. Let's say someone gets arrested for having a little bit of weed. Then they miss a parole date. Then they have a light out on the front of their car and a cop pulls them over and takes them in because that was their third strike. Yeah, that happens. And people go away for decades for that. Even if your judge thinks you don't deserve to go to jail, mandatory minimum and three strikes means you have to serve that sentence no matter what. And guess which lobbyists push these laws through? Big private prisons like CCA. If decades of imprisonment for crimes that hurt no one isn't cruel and unusual punishment, then I don't know what is. Now, once you are arrested and do or don't go to jail, having a felony or a record means that people can deny you your basic rights that everyone as a citizen of the United States is supposed to have. However, people and the government use the fact that people have a record to discriminate. People with records are denied loans, driver's licenses, housing, food stamps, welfare, jobs, and the right to vote. And this doesn't just affect those who have been convicted. We've gotten to the point where the United Nations Human Rights Committee has charged that US disenfranchisement policies are discriminatory and violate international law. The rest of the world says the way we are treating our own citizens post arrest is inhumane. Especially since, if you didn't pick up on this already, the way the police and the court systems function is racist. They don't say, hey, we are definitely picking on African Americans and Latinos, but the numbers show it. African Americans are between two and five times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession. And if you've missed it, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third has been pushing to re-up the war on drugs, specifically targeting marijuana users and even legal marijuana users. However, when the topic of the opioid epidemic comes up, which is predominantly a problem among white people, the discussion is finding ways to help people treat their addiction. Even though, according to findings from the 2000 National Household Survey and Drug Abuse, young white professionals are more likely to engage in illegal drug activity. But SWAT teams aren't breaking into Hamptons parties looking for weed. Now, maybe you're like, I have no human empathy, why should I care? Well, if all you care about is money, $39 billion of your tax money was spent on maintaining prisons in 2010, and the prison population has only gotten bigger. One trillion dollars has been spent on the war on drugs since its start, which is also your tax money. Money not your thing? Empathy not your thing? You seem fun at parties. Most people going to prison are in for non-violent offenses, minor drug crimes, or re-arrests due to the system breathing down people's necks. So actual violent crimes are not being focused on. In fact, they're being missed. 
So there are more violent crimes than ever. This is not the case in other countries. Finland designed their prisons to rehabilitate people and treat humans like humans. And they have fewer people in prison and far fewer people suffering with drug addiction. So what can you do? You know, after feeling depressed, after watching this video. Take your time on that. Well, there's a lot. Educate yourself about this. There is a ton of research about mass incarceration and mass arrests, the rise of the drug war and its effect on our prison systems. Personally, I recommend you watch the documentary The 13th and read the new Jim Crow to start if you haven't yet. Then, stay educated about the new laws being implemented that affect the prison systems. Specifically, legislations that affect those being arrested by keeping an eye on drug laws and crime laws. Push for lawmakers and law enforcers to deal with drug addiction using rehabilitation instead of just throwing citizens into cages. If you serve on a jury, do your job on the jury and don't send nonviolent offenders or those accused of nonviolent crimes to prison. Work with companies that hire people who were once in prison. If you can hire people, don't discriminate against ex-convicts arbitrarily. Donate or volunteer at organizations like All of Us or None of Us and a new way of life that helps people who are no longer in prison but trying to get that job or housing or food stamps since their release. Those of you interested in reclassifying drug records or following the new policies that will happen moving forward with marijuana should go to myprop64.org, created by the Drug Policy Alliance. In addition, Keep an eye on laws that affect immigrants. Call your senators about bills that are proposed that feed directly into this unjust system. If you see an arrest that is clearly a violation, step up, film it, report it. If you hadn't noticed all of the ICE raids and immigrant arrests that directly feed into the prison system, notice it. People are being locked away into detention centers, which is just a new word for prison. Why would they need a new word for prison? Because it's pretty hard to rationalize putting children in prison, but that's what detention centers are, prisons that they're allowed to put children in. Remember the day Trump was elected? I do. Well, the stock market went down in a lot of respects, except for one. Prison stocks went way up. However, for those of you who are completely opposed to drug use and don't care about immigrants or children being locked up inhumanely, think about it like this. If someone breaks a nonviolent law and they got caught and they go to jail, should they have to pay for that for the rest of their life? Wasn't jail time enough, if not frankly, overkill? Should they be denied basic citizen and human rights, placed in inhumane conditions? Because if you said yes, then it looks like you're disagreeing with our own American constitution, created by our own forefathers. Wow, real un-American of you. Our forefathers probably think you're a dick now. They're like, hey, jerk. We worked hard on those amendments. What's your deal, bro slash sis? Anyway, go be a good citizen and do something about this. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. Make sure you click the big C in the middle to subscribe. Click any of the videos in the boxes to the side of my head to watch those videos. Click that dumb YouTube bell to get notifications when we release a new video. And check out the description under this video for links to all those things that I mentioned where you can donate, volunteer, and help fix this problem.